All I want to hear is wah, wah, wah. Anyways, good morning. Yeah, hey, uh, oil's on the rise. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to Forex Dot Today. The world's friendliest and kindest and politest foreign exchange community on YouTube. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you're feeling good. Still no audio, really? Oh, there maybe there's a lag. You do hear sound, right? It says you hear sound. Can you confirm that you hear sound? Yeah? Okay, I think you got sound. All right, cool. So, uh, and by the way, uh, I did uh, increase the bandwidth on YouTube because I've increased the bandwidth um, on my setup. So now I got a Blackhawk modem, a Blackhawk Wi-Fi 6, uh, Wi-Fi 6, the new, 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 new Wi-Fi um, wireless router. And then I got the Nighthawk extension. So all Nighthawk, all the best net, whatever, net gear. And is that net gear? Whatever. And uh, so anyways, it's working awesome fast. So anyway, so now I've increased... Uh, YouTube settings since I can push quite a bit. So anyways, um, so let, let's get on with it. Happy day. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. But please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long run, and never risk when you cannot afford to lose. Ah, don't do that. There we go. I can't do that. All right, we'll do that. Hey, good morning. Yeah, it's really interesting now. YouTube is so crazy competitive um, that everything is now a challenge. So, like, if I run any song, any music, I think even if I hum a tune, automatically, boom, I get flagged for um, uh, copyrighted content and just instantly. And there must be bots that do it. So even if there's music in the background, I think like even if I sing it, even if it's not even true. So I've actually run uh, royalty free music and I get red flagged or sorry, it's yellow flagged actually. So it's just like automatically and they do it too, I think because they're taking revenue and they're trying to, and, right? And then another thing I've noticed, uh, some of you guys have told me that um, people are paying to put ads on the YouTube videos now, on our YouTube videos, every two minutes, boom, 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 boom. So they're like, they're trying to shut us down by just filling it with ads. Like everything is so competitive. Everyone's going ape crazy. So I might just turn all that off, but I turned it on because I thought maybe YouTube wasn't promoting our videos because there was no ads. So I put ads on and so it's it's weird. It's such a weird, strange, sometimes ugly world. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> right. So uh, so anyways, it's weird. So um, namaste. Uh, we'll we'll get through this weird, strange world together. Cool. By the way, my name is Wayne McDonald. Nice to meet you. I'm a currency trader. Been doing this for a very long time. I'm not the world's greatest. Uh, uh, I'm not the world's richest. I'm not the world's smartest, but I've been doing this a while and I'll share my experience with you and, and I'm hoping that it helps. I'm a global macro trend trader, so I'm not necessarily a scalper, although I can do it. I'm not necessarily a day trader, although I can do it. I'm not necessarily an intraday trader, but although I can do it, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so I'll simply share, uh, with the overriding goal of helping you put together trade plans, right? And my opinion is if you're able to plan, You'll, you're able to set up your trades in advance. Very cool. Instead of being reactionary. The sponsor of our community is Trader's Way. If you are benefiting from these webinars every single day that I've been doing for, uh, well, YouTube isn't 20 years old yet. So on YouTube, I've been doing videos, I think, for 14 years. Um, so if you find any of these videos um, helpful, inspirational, uh, critiquable, uh, pleasant, funny, happy, and all, if you have any emotional or intellectual response, uh, please thank you. Uh, thank uh, Traders Way by visiting tradersway.com. Open up a demo account. Just say, hey, right? Download MT4, place from trades. You'll see the execution speed is fast. 
you'll see the spreads are narrow, you'll see the swaps are huge. And maybe when you're ready to trade real money, whether it's tomorrow, in a week, in a month, in a year, in 10 years, well, hopefully they've earned your loyalty and respect, and then you can open up a, a real trading account. Pretty cool, huh? And then, okay, so after, let me tell you, just uh, because a lot of us, we're, we're currency traders and, and we're, we're obsessed with, you know, getting a better setup, getting better screens, getting um, better PCs, getting even uh, a mouse matters, right? Um, so, like I said, when I, when I had the Comcast modem, okay, um, with the Comcast Wi-Fi, and it's enterprise-grade, business-grade, commercial quality, not the Xfinity stuff that your grandma has. I upgraded to the best. I think it's $560 a month uh, to, to, to have gigabit speed with uh, all the enterprise-level equipment. And the best this old laptop could pull was about 200 megabits per second, but usually it was more like 150. So now I got rid of all Comcast equipment, replaced everything with Netgear and it's Nighthawk, Netgear Nighthawk system, separate modem, separate Wi-Fi, separate extender. Um, and this is what I'm getting now on my lame old PC over Wi-Fi. So very cool. And now, fingers crossed, it's stable because the, the Comcast Enterprise equipment would drop all the time. It'd drop and drop and drop. And of course, if you drop in the middle of a YouTube session, you, it, it, all, it all shuts down, right? So just if you're interested in the hardware that I did, right? No, my travel laptop, no, that it can pull better. I don't know. I, I, it's over there because I did an outdoor webinar yesterday. But um, this is just my, it's an old um, i5 uh, HP Pavilion 18 inch, you know, nothing special. So um, cool. Um, my, no, my, my screen, ha my, my, ex my other screens haven't showed up from China yet. Um, but uh, no, I'll show you my, um, I'll show you my settings here. Hang on. A little slow. So this is what I have here. So my laptop is an 18 inch la or 17 point something. I guess it's a 17 inch laptop. And that's set at uh, 1920 by 1080. Okay. And then I look at this. Whoa! But it's 3840 by 1080p. Pretty cool, huh? I didn't want to get the 4K just because everything would be small and all that kind of stuff. I, I want to see the charts. But it's the same as three screens put together. Very So anyways. So that's my setup on this laptop. Okay. But whatever. So some of you guys are interested in this stuff. That's all. Um, all right. So let's talk. Right? Oh, Reckless, you, pay, you get a gig for a, a $100 a month? Wow, no kidding. Yeah, Wi-Fi is the, the issue, though. If you can pull, uh, so typically only get like um, uh, six or 700 uh, Wi-Fi, but that's amazing, right? All right. All right, so. Okay. There may have been a game changer yesterday. Is that right? That's pretty good, crypto. Man, good for you. Um, mine's just a tax write-off anyway, so who cares, right? Um, there might have been a game changer yesterday. Jay Powell did an interview. Okay. Well, actually, let's back up. Let's back even farther. Wednesday is the FOMC meeting minutes. Okay, and we're going to learn, I think, that they've been discussing negative interest rates. Okay, <clears throat> and then last night, Jay Powell did an interview on TV, and he said, they have tons of things they can do. They, they have so much, and he, was, he even said, like, printing money is easy, you know, you just and just you do it on a computer, like so. He 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 basically said said 
that the tools they have are really endless. Okay, and one of the things that's happening this week is they're buying uh, 20 year treasuries, which is a very, very new thing. And there's lots of issuance of new debt and they're gonna buy it all up. So long story short, between what Jay Powell said last night and, and what's likely to happen in the bond market this week and what we're likely to see on the FOMC meeting minutes on Wednesday, there's a, a decidedly risk on mood. Okay? Okay? Decidedly risk on mood. And so if you were risk off, so like, Maida was risk off and she made 700 pips on her swing trade last week. I think it was over the course of two weeks in the swing trading group. And she was on her target last night. I'm like, hey, you know, <laughs> be careful. This is where you're supposed to take profit, right? So um, we'll see because now suddenly we went from risk off to risk on and everyone gets their turn, right? That's one of the things we talk about. Everyone gets their turn. So one of the groups um, in the, in the uh, live trading group set up a trade plan up in here for down. Okay. And this is based on their analysis on Thursday. I don't know if they still want to be a bear in this type of uh, environment but we'll have to talk about it uh, later today, okay? <clears throat> so what do you guys think about the idea of Jay Powell? Hey, thanks, Barry. Oh, you've been doing uh, crypto, yeah, after having? Yeah, so anyways, let's, let's think of this. Like, if things are risk on, then yen is going to be weak. Dollar is going to be weak. Swiss is going to be weak. Commodity currencies are going to be strong because commodity commodities will be strong. So things like oil will go up. Okay. They're in the training courses. I think... Um, uh, Mehdi, I think in uh, day two of the day trading course, um, there's lots of bonuses. And day three, there's more bonuses. So there's lots of downloads, lots of indicators, lots of EAs. There's quite a few things in day two and day three. Okay. So anyways, guys, crypto will be up. Oil will be up. Wheat will be up. Copper will be up. Okay. And that's what happens. The question is, yeah, for, for how long? Well, Maida, it's still something that you'll need to manage. Right? You'll need to manage it one way or the other. And it's pretty significant when people are interpreting what a central bank's going to do. Okay, like, let's put it this way, Maida. The central bank is confirming that they spent $4 trillion and they'll spend another four and they have no problem with it. And what that does, it not, right? It stabilizes the economy, but it could be a much longer term move, right? So like if you took your profit, then you did the exact right thing. If you're going to try again, that's fine too. Okay. And if it doesn't work out, then you'll know why. And if it does, then you played it well. It's one of those things, right? So will exotics be down? Well, guys, you got to think like third world countries are often the opposite of uh, more mature economies. Okay. Developing or emerging economies are often the opposite. So when things are bad, those countries have no money. So what does the country do? Prints money. So when things are bad, inflation is high. Okay? Now, let's reverse it. So like, uh, let's look at South Africa, for example. When things are good in the United States and the rest of the mature 
economies like Western Europe and Canada and such, right? What they do is they start buying, okay? They start buying stuff, commodities. And suddenly they're buying commodities from South Africa because things are good and those economies demand resources and they supply money. But they're demanding South African rand so that they can buy whatever they want to buy from South Africa. That drives up the valuation of the South African currency and drives down inflation. Okay? Do you understand? <clears throat> okay? So in, in good times, the USD South African Rand is probably heading down. And in bad times, it's, right, it's heading up, meaning in bad times, bad global macroeconomic conditions, the US dollar is strong because people are looking for safety. People like uh, investors around the world are looking for safety. So they find it in the world's largest, most mature economy. So they buy U.S. dollar and they get out of South Africa and then no one's buying stuff from South Africa. So exports from South Africa goes down and they lack foreign currency. They, they lack demand for their products. They're not earning money. But so the way that they pay the bills is they print money and inflation goes up. OK. Thank you, Maida. Appreciate it. Okay, so guys, don't look at the Fed like good or bad. Don't look at the government as good or bad. Don't look at, like we're only trying to make money. Okay, that's all we're trying to do. And once you understand what they're doing and the results of what they're doing, or, or let's say the consequences of what they're doing, then we can we can make trades and ideally profit from all these. What's up, Davey and Daniel? Black Betty and bow, 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 bow. Black Betty. All right. So that's cool, right? So if the Fed is willing to do more, spend more money or drive down rates negative, that creates a risk on move. And risk on means commodities up, risk on, all that kind of stuff. So you could look at exotics and think, all right, uh, Lira is going to be strong and South African Rand is going to be strong. Mexican peso is going to be strong on the outlook of increasing exports from those economies. Okay. And you would say, you're a Lira down. Oh, you're a Lira down. You'd say, uh, uh, USD czar down. Okay. Look at it from a smaller time frame. Okay. Not as dramatic, but let's all right let's take a look see this is what what was happening when things were bad and now things are stabilizing and getting gooder okay cool what about peso oh peso okay actually one of the more stable right well you got to add in march <laughs> So this is what happened when things were bad, guys. You see how the U.S. dollar got strong? Now stabilize, 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 stabilize. And now the trend is much more this way. And if it starts making lower lows, it's actually risk on peso. Okay. But notice like the big move here, the, the big sort of message I'm trying to give you is this is what happened when the world collapsed. Okay. This is what's happening now that we're stabilizing. And if the Fed is willing to do even more, whatever, that might bring a risk on mo uh, mo uh, mood, and you'll get that, or some form of that. Mo mostly, I, I would guess, like, just very slowly, very slowly, very slowly, okay? Okay, what I, what I hope is... Here, here's what I hope. I know it's not a strategy, but okay, we could see this, then we have this, and what I'm hoping will happen over the next three weeks or three months is eventually you get a clear break, and then it fizzles up, and then and then this, okay? 
And therefore, I could trade it like a breakout strategy. Okay. But a, a nice snap through resistance clearly says, all right, risk on. Okay, whatever. So I hope that was helpful. That's the, the U.S. Central Bank. The head of this U.S. Central Bank is dictating a communique. Think of it. He goes on TV. Why does the central banker want to do that? To communicate what they want. They want the stock market to go up. They want the housing market to go up. They want the job market to go up. So they're like, hey, man, we spent $4 trillion to support our initiatives, and we, we ain't even warmed up yet. If we need to do more, we're going to do more. And with that being said, that brings a pleasant mood because it tells risk on bulls that basically um, the central bank has got their back. That they're, if you're a bull in the U.S. stock market, you got the U.S. central bank backing you up. A put, sort of, right? Think about that. You're hedged with a, with a J. Powell put. So... That's why I say, like, Demeta, like, be careful. I understand her trade makes tons of sense. I'm not saying she's wrong. Uh, uh, there's plenty of reasons to be risk off. Just be, be very careful because there are also lots of people that are trying to get risk on. Okay, things for the risk off mo mode would be uh, Trump starting a second trade war with China. Okay, and... And he would do it simply uh, to get reelected. That's a real risk. I think if if you're a risk off mode trader right now, that's going to be the biggest thing that's going to help you. Okay. GM says uh, has a question about negative rates. I've never traded negative rates before in the United States of America. It's really a strange thing. And uh, I don't think we're going to actually go there because I know Australia's thinking about it. New Zealand's thinking about it. The, the U.S. is kind of, I don't think they're actually thinking about it. I think they're they're just playing the market a little bit. Um, but I think we could look at Europe and say it didn't do uh, either, one of two things. Negative interest rates haven't helped or the ECB is too timid and they didn't do enough. Remember the whole thing where the ECB said they were going to do less, but they were going to do it for longer? Like, really? That That's going to work? Um, so maybe they misplayed it. They didn't do it right. If the Fed does negative interest rates, they'll do it right. They'll go big. I mean, it's the American attitude, right? Um, so who knows? But it doesn't seem like it, it's necessary. What we need is people to get back to work. And that's the play that I'm making. So... The way I've explained it to the uh, to the live trading group is that I want to be bullish. I'm trying to be bullish. Uh, I'm trying to bet on a recovery. I'm trying to bet on people um, getting healthy, that the health situation improves, that uh, global macro trade improves. And I, I understand that this might be... 18 weeks, but it might be 18 months before we get back to relative normality. But that's what happened after 2000 and 9 uh, 9-11, um, uh, right? After 9-11, where it took two years before people were truly traveling on airplanes again, uh, out of fear, not out of a technology or something, just out of fear. And the TSA had to be created and we had to take our, bo our boots off, our belts off, uh, can't wear a hat on an airplane, um, that kind of stuff, right? So, um, but at that point, people finally felt safe. Well, it might take two years before we all hang out in Vegas again. But that might be the trade that I'm setting up here mentally. Okay, so I could be a long-term cautious bull. And that's going to set up my trade. Now, you could be, over the next six months, you could say there's lots of problems still out there. Uh, I think there's still risk off. I think a lot of companies or uh, even sectors are going to come back much more slowly. I think some companies are going to ha have trouble finding debt. Um, and, and all those things are going to drag things down. Then that's your alpha. Stick to it. I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. Okay. So if you're risk off, be risk off. You'll have times 
when the markets are not favorable to your risk off. But then you will have times where the markets are favorable to your risk off position. You'll be there. You'll be ready. You'll be waiting. RWA. Boom. Ready, willing, and able to take the shot at the right time. Okay. And I'm just sort of, I'm sort of, I think I'm going to be a long, slow bull. Okay. Cool. So anyways, there you go. There's a long discussion of of the Fed entering the market this week to buy bonds, to buy treasuries, increasing the supply of U.S. dollars, and therefore a risk-on mode. Um, um, basically, Jay Powell put to drive up the stock market and to uh, increase demand for commodities, to increase exports from commodity exporting countries, to put value um, or an increase in valuation on on those. Okay. So anyway. Wowzer. Well, this is loading. If you're a MetaTraders customer, guess what? MetaTraders 2.0 is going to be launched, I think, this week. And you're going to love it. And if you're already a customer, don't worry about it. You'll, you'll get 2.0 compliments of the firm. <laughs> so I will send out emails to everybody. That will include a new installer that installs everything for you automatically. And that will also include the new biased pivots. No new purchase necessary. Everyone gets access. All right. Sweet, huh? Which is not bad for a $5 product. All right. All right, so those bears are in their euro yen trade. So good luck. Good luck to them, even though it's my money. So what we did on Thursday, just if you don't know, uh, the live trading group got together. Uh, we broke out into groups. Everyone showed up with trade plans that they were ready to pitch through their group. So they got together groups, I think about six people. And they shared their trading ideas. And uh, some might have been bullish on something. Other people might have been bearish. But then as a group, they picked the best uh, trading idea from their group. They, I think we had six groups. And then we listened to uh, pitches from each group on what the best trades were going to be for this week. Of course, this is on Thursday. So the best trades that were going to happen this week. Um, and then I took those trades on my account. And many of them haven't executed, and some are just executing now. Oh, thank you, Meta. Cool. Okay, so anyways, that's how we roll, yo. All right, so Eurozar would be one of those ones that would benefit from uh, increased in global uh, trade. And you'll see we got the sell zone, and the target is down in here. And I think that's raise trade. You know, Black Betty says uh, in Africa we got uh, superpower for disease. Actually, I made a comment on that back in uh, March, maybe even February, where I, I said, you know what, I, I think because, um, you know, in America, I think I picked on um, housewives that walk around spraying everything with disinfectant so little Billy doesn't get sick. But little Billy has snot running out of his nose 24 hours a day. And then she takes him to the hospital and he has to get, you know, antibiotics and all this kind of stuff where, you know, Africans just might be tougher. <laughs> right. Or little American boys or, or, or sissies. <laughs> I got to be careful. Everyone's going to hit me. Uh, but what I was saying, though, is if you've never been exposed to germs and viruses and all that kind of stuff, you, you're, you're more susceptible. Um, right. And Africans may just be tougher. And we'll see. Like I said, I don't really know, but it'll be interesting. Okay. It'll be interesting to see uh, how it affects. So, hey, look at this. So group, 
uh, I think this was group two, wasn't it? Group two is making money. So anyways, we'll, we'll pay attention to these. My air conditioning didn't come on today for some reason. It's really hot in here. So anyways, congratulations to the groups that are in their trades. We can take a look. So the risk, and this is interesting too, because that's a risk on trade. I canceled one of the trades, maybe two of the trades, because they're not, and this could have been one that I canceled too, um, because they didn't set up the way we had planned. And so that they're really different trades, even though they're the same pair and the same price. Um, they're different because of the timing. So I guess we'll take a look at, we'll look at the Aussie Yen since it's, since it's working. Okay. And you can see we got a step up here. Okay. And this is the general plan. Okay. Got to get through this. And if you can get through 70, you'll be good to go, right? Wayne, please give a guide on formulating a realistic spreadsheet. Maybe you just use Excel, right? Maybe three to five years compounding profits in an ideal. Yeah, um, I just built my own um, when I did that. I, so if you don't know the story, let's just back up. I'll assume you don't know the story. In year, in my, I think in my first year as being a full-time trader, so I quit my job as a venture capitalist. I started, I, I turned in, uh, a bedroom into an office, got my uh, computer screens and everything, and I was super happy. And about maybe six months or eight months into it, um, the effects of being alone all the time, and of course I traded in the middle of the night, that started weighing on me, and I went through a bad trading period. And uh, I, I, I was wondering if I had made a mistake that I gave up my dream job to work, work in this home office in the middle of the night and lose money for, for the effort. And so I asked myself, I said, well, you know, I'm used to being successful. What have I done in the past that has always led to success? And, re and remember, before Forex, um, I, you know, I, w I had done things in my previous life before Forex where I was in newspapers around the world and magazines around the world. I was in Inc. Startup mag uh, or Inc. Magazine's Hot Startup of 1999 issue. You know, all these different things. So I, I, I had success before I went into Forex. And I asked myself, well, what did I do in the past that made me successful? And there was two things that I identified. One, I always had a business plan. And I realized I don't have a business plan for my Forex trading. I just sit down and try to make as much money as I can. I'm like, that's not what a business does, not a real business. And then second one, uh, I always surrounded myself with smart, intelligent, like-minded people. And I'm like, I need those two things. So one of the things I did right away is I I booked a, uh, a suite at the Ritz-Carlton. And it was really nice because it had an outdoor patio with a fire pit and everything. Um, and I locked myself up in the hotel for several days. And I did a business planning retreat with myself. Okay. And I took it very, very seriously. And you're like, okay, he took it seriously. I took it so seriously that I had a board meeting. And I had people attend the board meeting by phone. We took meeting minutes. Okay. I had an agenda. I wrote the agenda and the meeting minutes on the hotel's notepad so I can show that I actually did these meetings and, of course, write it off my taxes. Um, but, yeah, and one of the things I did is I sat down and I made a, a was it a three-year? I guess it was a three-year perform a cash flow statement. Okay, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually returns. And I analyzed things like, so you, you start with a uh, an opening balance, you start with risk parameters, and all this kind of stuff, and then you compound and, and all that kind of stuff, and you adjust your lot size as you go. And uh, th it was such an amazing experience. It changed everything about how I looked at Forex. Um, one of the things I realized is at the rate I was going, 
I was going to make $580 million a year. And I'm like, well, perhaps I'm a little over leveraged, <laughs> right? Whoa. And then I noticed lots of other things. So I started asking myself, if I paid myself monthly, if I paid myself quarterly, if I paid myself annually, how would it impact my overall returns? If I paid myself 50% of profits versus 30% of profits versus 20% of profits, how much money would I earn? And there were so many paradoxes that I found while doing this experiment. It was just mind boggling and mind opening. So the less I risk, the more I made. The less I paid myself, the more money I earned. Things like that. Okay. So when Lungster says, hey, uh, give us a guide on a realistic spreadsheet, maybe three or five years compounding profits. Yeah. Open up Excel and build one. Okay, work on it for a week. It might take you three days. It might take you a week, but you should be able to do that. Okay. Okay. It's just a pretty standard perform a cash flow statement. So I, I had to think of things like, well, how much money will I earn a day? And so I had to look at my own trading history and think about it. And I realized uh, I can get lucky and make 10 pips if I'm like scalping along and stuff, right? But I found if I if I made more than 15 pips, I, I more likely made 30 to 50. Okay. And that's how I came down with minimal acceptable performance. If I couldn't easily make 15, I wouldn't take the trade um, and all this kind of stuff. And so in my uh, perform a cash flow statement, I said, well, on the long run, on the average, I'm going to base it on for the day making 15 pips. I know it's tiny, but I'm saying, well, if you add in your losses, if you add in the days you don't trade and all this kind of stuff. And so I created this minimal acceptable performance. And then uh, I realized I didn't need giant lot sizes. So I adjusted my lot size and I put in my starting income or my starting deposit. And then uh, I, I looked at an average of 15 pips a day. And then I played around. So I, I, I made a component to adjust average for uh, average leverage for the trade and by leverage I mean lot size and then uh, I did another interesting thing as I made money meaning as my account size grew I actually increased lot size more slowly so for example if I doubled my lot size or sorry if I doubled my account let's say instead of doubling my lot size my lot size relative to the account size might have only grown by 50 percent so I actually throttled back the more the more I grew my account the, the less risk I took per trade per day right so that at the end of three years every single day was hardly any risk relative to the overall account okay so I, I took it as serious as, as I possibly could and all these things the smaller trades were important because any individual day was irrelevant I just had to achieve on the longer run my average of 15 pips so I didn't have to trade today. I didn't need one more trade. Uh, I didn't need big trades. In fact, I didn't want big trades where I go all in. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make so much money quickly. Uh, I realized doing this that I never had to go big. I don't have to go big because I know if I do the stupid little average 15 pips a day, at the end of three years, I easily hit my, uh, my profit target easily, right? Whatever that is. So you'll make up a number. Like as long as you're doing that, let's say you're trying to make 100000 a year. Let's say by the year three, if you're just averaging, you're easily doing that. And that's fine, right? And, and meanwhile, not only are you doing that, you're saving money faster than you're spending it, which is also another one, another key component, right? So I learned so much by doing this that I don't need to take risk. I don't need to feel like I have to trade. I don't have to throw down large trades. I don't have to make a ton of money today because the the a lot of money today means I took a lot of risk. Well, I don't need the risk. I need the consistency over long periods of time and compounding interest takes care of it. Plus I'm lowering risk the whole time. And it just all of a sudden takes so much burden off your shoulders and off your psyche and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so to the person that asked the question, yeah, sit down and do it. All right, sit down and do it.
It'd probably be the most important thing you've ever done as a Forex trader. Okay. <clears throat> the most, it's probably the most important thing you'll ever do as a currency trader. Oh, let, let's finish that. Um, where were we? Aussie end. Let's finish this. Okay. So this is the bullish uh, uh, biased pivots. Let's just look at it on a confluence. And I got to click in here. Okay. And let's see what's going on here. So bulls, let's see how this set up. Bear sold it at 70. Okay. Boom. And this down here is a buy zone. So bulls bought it up. So now bulls have their turn. Bears defend. Okay. And bulls come back. Now, check this out. This is the exact pivot a bull would buy. Okay. Okay. So this is the exact, right? But here's the thing. Now using price action, let me change my different color. Okay. So here's what a bull is thinking. Okay. I'm a little cautious in those scenarios just because we're not trending. Okay. We're just not trending. It's it's still not a good trade, even though this is a profitable trade. It's still not a good trade because I want to be a trender. But, you know, when I say I personally want to be a bull and I, I, I know it's probably going to be a long, slow sloth of a trend, I'd, I'd buy it here and like try never to get out. Beta is like, we're now in the weekly M3. This is where a bear would sell. Yes, 69 and a half. Right? So you could drop in to like, drop in on your four hour chart and really zoom in. And one of the things you would do, um, analyzing a four hour, let, let's do it this way. Um, you have one, two, three, four candles with no true real lower low. Okay. So not bearish. Then, okay, now I'm looking at this. There was an up, 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 down, down, buy. So notice this is all lows, right? Lower, low, lower, high. Lower, low, lower, high. Lower, low, lower, high. Not lower, low, lower, high. Not lower, low, higher, high. So if you were drawing an oscillator, and I'm, I've been training you guys how to do this with your mind, you should be able to see your stochastics doing this. Okay, in this candle. So now we have a higher high relative to this high and a higher low relative to this low. Okay, there's your change in trend, right? So now, and I'm talking to Meta's idea of, okay, we're on a we're on a M3 here. I'm just saying, well, be careful, okay? So now we're at this higher low, okay? It goes up, makes a higher low. Right. And then a higher low again and then a higher high, then a higher low. Now we're a higher high. So right now, as long as we're above this, this is to me still technically bullish. OK. Partially because we haven't made a red candle yet. Now, you can drop into a one hour and try to cut this corner, but um, I wouldn't sell this just because we're at M3, just because we're at 69 and a half. Right. Because remember what we want is essentially if you're a bear, what I'm saying is you probably want some down first. Okay. And then maybe a, a lower high, lower low in which you can catch the next lower high, lower low. Right. You want, you want the oscillator to roll over and you know how to create an oscillator rollover is you need no, no higher highs and eventually a lower low. And then you'll sell the lower high. And, and you'll take it down like this. 
and you'll say, aha, M3. Well, if we're not in a proper downtrend, then I'm going to wait for extra confirmation. You see how I'm doing that, guys? So if the bears do enter on this weekly M3, we'll see it technically. Okay. And you'll probably play that. And, and currently, you know, bulls should still buy dips and bears are looking for, you know, um, bearish rallies to sell. Okay. So on the lo longer run, I would still look at it this way. If I was a bull, I'm going to expect a higher low. Okay. So now you can probably drop into a smaller time frame than that, maybe even a 15 minute chart. And you know, this is four hour support. So as long as we're above that, you're looking to do stuff like this. Okay, because you're a bull. You see that? And you're not looking for anything else. Now a bear wants to see a 5A cross, double top, lower low scenario. So yeah, so if you breach the if you do a double top and 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 head down to the 55, well then we know the 55 predicts a lower higher double top and therefore, you know, the bears are going to get involved, but it probably won't be till tomorrow. It might come down now, but you might not truly get bearish conditions until later today or tomorrow. Okay, your bears might enter this tomorrow in Asia or London Open. Go to the 30 minute. Okay, well, you know, now we're just dry, dry, driving down. So as a bear, you do have resistance there, right? So I'm not disagreeing with that. That is where a bear would sell if they exist. That's the best setup right now for a bear. What I'm saying is you should be cautious because right now it's not bearish conditions. So you're selling in an uptrend on this time frame. Okay, that's all. That's all. That's all. Uh, a bull is going to buy this. That's how I look at this. A bull will buy this. Bears might sell it, but a bull will buy it. That's how I'm d defining my thought process here. Okay. Bears might sell it, but bulls are going to buy that. They're going to buy a dip. Okay. That would be sort of that kind of look there. But so let's now let's look at let's go back to this. What does every one of these candles have? There's a there is a level of pullback. OK, so let me let me kind of zoom in here. OK, you see there's a wick on the top, a wick on the top, a wick on the top and a wick on the top. The wick means it was higher than it did come down. OK, meaning what we're thinking is there's going to be something like this if you're a bull. Question is, is it bear selling or is it bulls taking profit? OK, so here's we're, we're kind of in a situation like this. See this double top? See this double bottom? OK, imagine they're just reverse. So you get this down, 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 up, up, sell. OK, so there could be an even bigger down, down and a bigger up, up. But we're going to stay like in this case, you had to stay below this neckline and you're going to stay. Uh, oh, that's not the right neckline. Uh, Maybe we haven't quite got the neckline yet. Okay, so there might be another up before a down. Anyways, let's go back. Um, so we know this area here is important. Anything below that, bulls are out. So the bulls are going to defend that. That's the, the big part. And the next one, we know there's going to be a wick. And then the next... OK, so I think there's a lot. So a bull is going to try this and a bear, I think, needs needs this, needs this and needs this. OK. 
So maybe think about this as a bear. Okay, you need basically a hanging man with uh, a bearish engulfing. So that means the next one would be a hanging man, followed by a bearish engulfing. Okay, which means what? Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Okay. So you might be right on the price and all that kind of stuff. I'd be I'd be a little cautious before I started selling, but I think a bull is going to buy. Bears might sell, but it might be too early. This, a shooting star? Oh, why? Because it's not red? See, I don't get into all the candle names and stuff like that. They're, they're meaningless to me. Okay? This, this came up, hit the obvious, stupid, obvious resistance, and got rejected. You can call it whatever you want. Okay? The most important part of it is how it was followed up with. Okay? But I don't, I've long since forgotten the names. A lot of those names were created so that you had to buy a book. Okay, when you have a book of the 274, stick, uh, 274 candlestick patterns every trader should know, it's because they're trying to sell you a book. There's probably five that are interesting. And everything else is just a different iteration of the same thing. You sell it resistance, you buy it support. Right? All right, so let's take a look at another commodity play. So we know on a risk on tone, USD CAD should be coming down. So let's take a look at USD Kitty CAD. There's a lot of currency pairs that are doing this right now. A lot of currency pairs that are just sideways. Okay. And in fact, this one is getting caught at the top of the range and not even heading down to the bottom. But what do we know about this? Well, we know that the definition of these pivots tell us all bears are going to sell at this price and all bulls are going to buy at this price. That's what they tell us. That's what those lines mean. Uh, it just happens to be working out. Do you want to get involved in this? Well, it's this is where your bias is important. If you're a risk on like me, or let's say, I, I shouldn't say I'm risk on, I want to be risk on. In a situation where you want to be a risk on, you're selling an M3. This is both monthly M3 and weekly M3. So I got all the permission in the world, right? And the target for that trade would be down here. I'm not convinced we'll get it just because we haven't been doing anything. But like I said, you got to remember the fundamentals. News, by the way, is not fundamentals. News is a data point that gets analyzed fundamentally when you look at its trend and the trend relative to the overall conditions and, and most importantly, the central bank's change in policy to address that trend. In this case, the real fundamental analysis has nothing to do with CPI, uh, CPI, PPI, PCE, GDP. It has nothing to do with that. The Fed is telling us, both in the FOMC meetings coming up on Wednesday, but also their news, right, so the news interview they did on Sunday, which is just front-running what they're going to probably talk about in, on the Wednesday's meeting minutes, is that they're willing to do more and potentially a lot more. And that in of itself is new information relative to potential changes in policy at the Fed, which are accommodative, which drive this down. So your, your, your PPI is irrelevant 
what, what's most interesting is what the Fed is going to do about a good or a bad or ugly PPI. In this case, we're not even interested in PPI. We're, we're just interested in the Fed, and the Fed is already in the news right now. Therefore, they're, they're, what this says, and here's my opinion, what I'm learning from the Fed last night and what we're likely to learn in the, in the Fed meeting minutes on Wednesday is the Fed is weakening the dollar. The Fed is monetizing its debt. The Fed is doing quantitative easing. The Fed is weakening the U.S. dollar. That's enough. I don't need any more analysis. I don't care what GDP last quarter was. I don't care what PPI is. I'm already past that data set analysis, and I'm skipping straight to what the Fed is telling me they are going to drive down the dollar. Now, one day when the economy recovers and, f and inflation is a problem and they start raising interest rates, that'll probably impact the way I think about the market. And then one day interest rates, let's say, go all the way to 7%. And then one day they'll say, no more raises. Then I'll immediately do the next thing. Do you understand? Like, you can get rid of all news completely and only focus on the Fed because the only reason the currencies change value is because of the Fed policy. And when you get to a website that amps you up, right, on non-farm payrolls, on retail sales, on, uh, on all these different things, they're amping you up like, oh my God, rah, 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 rah. whoa, whoa, whoa. That's actually not what moves the market. What moves the market is the Fed. And that's what you can focus on completely. What is the Fed doing now? What is the Fed likely to do soon? And what do you think the Fed is going to do long run? Those are the three questions that matter most, and everything is irrelevant. Now, when you do care about PPI, CPI, PCE, is when the market conditions are changing, and then you interpret that or extrapolate from that and say, what is the Fed reaction? To this, will they need to change their policy? That's what fundamental analysis is. And they're like, oh my God, we're starting to get inflation. Rates go up. Okay. Rates go up. And you know what? What are you taught in school? What did your last guru teach you? If rates go up, you buy, right? You buy the US dollar? They're absolutely 100% wrong. If rates go up, the dollar will weaken. And when they can't, when rates are so high they can't raise them more, the dollar will strengthen. It's the opposite of what you think. It's the opposite of what you learned in school. So anyways, I'm glad you're here so we can track all this. So anyways, the Fed is telling me, and of course I might be wrong. Never forget that, okay? I might be wrong. But the Fed, I think, is telling me, whispering in my ear, this is what they want. And they're willing to spend money to get that. So I'm like, cool. Yeah, pure mathematics is I was taught that rates go up and so you buy. It'll actually weaken the U.S. dollar. But here's the thing. I'm talking about the U.S. dollar specifically, pure mathematics. I'm talking about the reserve currency in particular. Okay. Now, if you're talking about uh, Great Britain and they raise interest rates, okay, the pound probably will strengthen. But I'm talking about the reserve currency. And so what they're saying, what the Fed is saying is they're willing to spend more money Okay, so when you get and and remember, they're not like out of their bank, out of their savings account. No, no, no. When they add more money, this is the key. Money supply increases, the value of the dollar decreases. This also solves liquidity problems where third world countries are short on dollars. Well, now they can get their hands on more dollars because the Fed already created four trillion more dollars but the value of each one of those dollars is cheaper so you're actually making the debt of foreign 
uh, of foreign countries, in particular, let's say emerging markets, that have their debt priced in dollars, well, the Fed is actually lowering the dollars and, and easing the debt burden per dollar. So anyways, so if I get that right, I'm thinking this way. Okay. And if that stabilizes global macroeconomics, if suddenly that uh, because China is back online and they're buying commodities from Canada and Australia and New Zealand. Okay, well then cool, then Canada is going to benefit, Australia is going to benefit, New Zealand is going to benefit. And all this put together means USD CAD down. And let's say Aussie dollar up. And to me, it's the same trade. Okay. And I'm not analyzing Australia per se, I'm only selling the US dollar because I believe that's what happens when things are good. And it's telling me right now the Fed wants to buy, uh, wants to create and increase the amount of US dollars on the planet, weakening the value per dollar. Okay. Now, here's where relative strength comes in. China and the US get into a trade war. Right. So Trump po politicizes COVID-19, blames China for it. So what they're saying now is that China not only created it, but they used the WTO to hide it. And then they put hundreds of thousands of Chinese on airplanes and sent them to Milan and, and other parts of the world. And so he's politicizing it. And then if this gets nasty and we, and they, we get into a trade war because he's, he blames China for not uh, sticking to their commitments back in January, then what will happen is, uh-oh, okay, this will weaken. And this whole trade goes away, okay? Okay, so anyways, that's how you it would change directions. Right now, it seems like higher high creates a lower low, which creates a lower high, okay? If the tune of the story changes, it's going to change here. So maybe it comes up, kisses 65 and comes down and that goes back to your risk off mood. And that means uh, we have to wait till Wednesday to, for the FOMC meeting minutes to really come out and say it, that they're thinking, they've actually discussed negative interest rates. And if that happens, then we can dollar again. Imagine if the Fed paid you to borrow money. That is supposed to weaken the U.S. dollar, right? Okay. Well, the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency, so it supersedes everything else, okay? So let's boil it down to what we know technically. Bulls are supposed to buy it here. Bears are going to sell it there, correct? We know that. If you don't know that, oh, my God, you need to take the training courses. Okay, but that's like flat out, you know what to do, um, right? If you're a buyer, this is the exact price. If you're a seller, this is the exact price, okay? And you kind of wait for it. So bears are probably going to be short by tomorrow if there's bears. See, if there's no bears, we're going to be up here tomorrow. Okay, so you have to think about, well, what would bulls do then? Well, they're going to get their way. Then there'll be a pullback on some profit taking. Then we'll get a, a rise and we'll be up here. Okay, that's if there's no bears in the market. And we, we haven't even got to the bearish entry. We ha there, bears shouldn't have done anything yet. So... Bulls haven't been tested. So we know bears live here. And if our, if bears are ready, ready to sell here and sell here and sell here, then tomorrow, if this truly is still risk off, we'll be down there tomorrow. So the thing is, you just got to do what you got to do. Bears sell here. That's it. Bulls buy there. That's that. It's not debatable. It's just what they do. Okay. It's what they don't do that really impacts things. So if bears don't sell this, then bulls are, have a free hall pass. They're not even being challenged. Of course it's going to go up. Okay.
Okay? How do you know? They sell! You'll get red candles. Right? <laughs> right? They'll sell it. You'll see some red. If they don't sell it, you'll just see green, 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 Bubba. Green all the way. Cool. How many people here saw my review of the weekly calendar and, um, and the discussion of the most powerful woman on Wall Street uh, yesterday? How many people saw that? So let's go back to the market. If you missed it, it's right there on the link. And make sure you subscribe, please. Okay. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah, it's very difficult. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong, but... We survived. Yeah, it got really windy. It was a nice cigar, though, for sure. Uh, WTI, yeah. My oh my, WTI. Okay, we're at the weekly target. So this is a pretty dangerous place to be buying. Yeah, it was in fact a very good cigar. It's a Monte Cristo 100 Days. It's good. So I, I have two, currently two favorite cigars uh, that I um, I have in the humidor. One is these um, Monte Cristo 100 Days. They're a darker, um, I call them thinner, like a Churchill style cigar, because uh, I, I usually smoke thicker cigars. Um, and it's, it's nice. It's beautiful. It's dark, but not too dark and all that kind of stuff. Uh, really nice, well balanced, perfectly rolled, perfectly blended cigar. And then I have another Monte Cristo, um, which is Añejo. Añejo. It's not Añejo. It's like Añejo de Dos or something. Um, but anyways, extra aged as well. Um, so both are extra aged. And uh, But it's a milder cigar. But again, just and they've been extra aged and they've been in my humidor for, uh, I don't know, one of the boxes I found. Uh, so I, I found this box. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I opened it up and it was full of cigars. And then I said, well, what else is in this humidor? I'm going through all these boxes. And I found another box and it was these Monte Cristos. And I'm like, oh my God, this is full. <laughs> like I never even opened it. And so I don't know how long it's been in there. Three, four, five years. I, I couldn't tell you. Um, but anyways, they, they turned out to be pretty fantastic cigars. If you like those kinds of things. So I've been uh, on on the weekends, I've done it twice now where I light a cigar and enjoy a cup of coffee and I go through the newspaper with my uh, Forex friends. No, 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 Jermaine, you got it absolutely 100% backwards. No, you got it backwards and that's the problem. Most people think about it and they get it backwards because they they believe they've been you've been taught 
that all currencies behave the way that you're describing it. Um, but they're not the reserve currency. It's completely different. Okay, completely different. So think about it this way. When the Fed lowers interest rates, something wrong is happening in the world because it's impacting the world's largest economy pretty significantly. So things are bad, okay? And when things are bad globally, investors around the world put their money in the US economy because they believe it's the safest, it's the least bad. So when things are bad globally, and it forces, let's say, I like to say the billionaire in Malaysia, they don't wanna stick their money in a Malaysian bank, so they buy a bunch of US treasuries and lock it up in the US market and they're guaranteed, guaranteed to earn some sort of interest rate. Now here's the other thing. Then the Fed is going to lower again, right? So now you're a billionaire and you're like, well, if I buy bonds today, I'll get a certain interest rate. But if tomorrow the Fed cuts interest rates, then I'll earn less tomorrow. So the fact that the Fed is cutting interest rates again in the future creates more dollar strength because everyone essentially wants to front run the Fed cutting. It's a behavioral finance issue. So because the Fed is cutting, and in particular because they're expected to cut again, it drives up demand for the dollar and the dollar strengthens. Because money is moving out, let's say, away from Malaysia and into the US. So when the Fed, and here's the other thing I said, when the Fed is expected or announces that they are done cutting, the minute that happens, dollar will weaken. How many people have heard that from me? That you have to listen for or interpret that the Fed is done cutting. And in that moment, the US dollar gets weak. How many people have heard that before? Raise your hand, say I, or say type I, or yo, 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 or <laughs> what's up, or for sure. Man, where's my kind of? Is there a lag or you really haven't heard that? See, it's good that I ask because I don't know what you don't know. Okay, there's a lag. That's a good 30 second lag. And I'm pushing as fast as YouTube will accept. All right, cool. So you know that. So that's why this is important. Okay. So if, if the Fed says they'll cut again, that might actually create some dollar strength. If they cut into negative territory. But if they said we're done cutting, but we're not done spending, well, if they spend money by buying things, that increases the money supply. Okay, it's not making money cheaper. It's not cutting interest rates on people's saving instruments, right? This has to do with simply increasing mon uh, money supply through monetary policy and open market operations. So in that case, dollar loses value. Therefore, commodities priced in dollars have to go up. Also, it creates risk on because your, your dollars are, are weak. So, I don't know, it forces you out of the U.S. Um, and then things like gold and Bitcoin go up and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Oh, right on, Richard. I'm glad. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, would you, uh, for everyone watching right now, uh, would you please click the like button? Two thirds of you have not clicked the like button. I'd appreciate it if you could tell YouTube that this is quality content. Okay. Famobix says, uh, of course the Fed is going to cut. I, I don't think so. This is my opinion. I don't think so. I don't think they want to. I think it's dangerous. I think it's, uh, they don't know what it'll do. I don't think it worked in Europe. Uh, so I think they would rather um, create more money and weaken the U.S. dollar than um, cut interest rates to a negative level, take that risk, and strengthen the dollar. Okay? 
And remember, Trump wants a weak dollar. Interest rates are already at zero, so you know what I mean? So um, I'm not convinced, like, uh, Pamela Big says, of course they're going to cut. Uh, I think they're done, but not uh, done cutting rates. Remember, I said cutting rates is what makes the dollar strong. Um, but if they're going to increase the uh, money supply, which is buying bonds, then the U.S. dollar will weaken. Okay. Pamela Big says they, they've got no more options. Well, this is why you need to read the FOMC meeting minutes on Wednesday because they've talked about their options. And then last night on, uh, uh, in his interview, he said they got plenty of options. Famo Big says printers already in the red zone. There is no red zone when it comes to the reserve currency. There is no red zone. Okay. The U.S. debt is in dollars. So if they weaken the dollar, they lessen their debt. So, okay. So anyways, uh, I wouldn't be so sure. So anyways, I don't, there you go. So, and the cool thing is we can disagree because nobody actually knows. All right. Uh, la, 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 pound. Pound hit the monthly target. Well, if they sell the debt, they don't really care who owns it. Who cares? Do you honestly care who owns your mortgage? Most people don't even know who owns their mortgage. Made says the Fed will buy it back, but they don't have to. See, they buy new debt. Peter DeVries says, what will happen in the near future the U.S. Do, will not be the reserve currency. No, absolutely not. There is no other currency that's even remotely close to being a potential reserve currency. Okay? The euro can't even manage its euro, right? Like, it, the euro was a great experiment, and I had a lot of hope for it, but um, it, there's, there's real, real, real flaws, um, and it can't likely be a reserve currency until they fix some of these flaws. So I don't think that's going to happen very quickly, um, but it has the most potential. Um, China, can its currency cannot be a reserve currency. They don't have a mature bond market. They don't have a trustworthy legal system. They don't have, a, uh, uh, let's say, an open political system. It, it's a thousand, you know, I wouldn't say a thousand years. It's a hundred years. It's right. It's 50 to 100 years away from being maybe a reserve currency. Okay. So right now there's, there's, I mean, the U.S. is free and open elections. It has a trustworthy legal system. It has a stable economy. It has a, a mature bond market. It, it has a mature central banking uh, system. I mean, there's, uh, it's the world's largest economy. Uh, it has a stable financial system. Um, I mean, there's just, it's so right there. It's so far. So Europe is maybe the next opportunity, but it has structural flaws that need to be fixed. So maybe Euro becomes a, re, a, a co-reserve currency, but I bet you it'll take 25 years to even get close to fixing that. So I'd say maybe the euro becomes a reserve currency in 25 to 50 years if they fix it. But we've had it for 10 or 15 years and it's still flawed. Right. And then and then China is probably 50 to 100 years away 
if they um, if they address their legal system and their bond market system and their uh, financial system. And I mean, there's just so much that China will have to do. Okay. But when you read things like when you're finding little pamphlets stuck to a telephone pole that says the U.S. is going to collapse, the dollar is worthless, it's all these horrible people at the Fed, um, you're reading stuff that's highly politicized and not actually factually true. Okay. Well, that might be. We'll see, Peter. Okay. We'll see. Crypto's got a long ways to go, too. <clears throat> I think crypto will be an interesting side currency. I think it, crypto will be somewhat like hoarding gold. Okay. But it might, maybe it becomes something. That's true. But right now, it doesn't meet the definition of money quite yet. Uh, but that could change just like, you know, I, was, I, was, I remember talking with my wife the other day, like how fascinating that so many people have been forced into things like Zoom and using their smartphones to actually visually have a video conference call with another human being. And for our kids, it's absolutely normal. Right. Um, where many years ago, uh, I saw it as sort of the, the future. But back then you, could, you had to use Skype. And you can get a Skype phone with a camera, but you had to call people with another Skype phone uh, with a video camera in their phone. I'm like, well, then I got to buy one for my mom. I got to buy one for my dad. And, you know, how long is it like everyone in the world is going to have a Skype phone, right? And I'm like, it's going to be a very long time before talking face to face over the phone is going to be common. And then we've had the technology for several years and there's a lot of grandparents that have never FaceTimed before. And now it's totally normal. Right now you have parties with 10 people on the phone and you're playing games together and it's totally normal for people to be all around the world hanging out with each other. So um, there can be a change when, you know, right now I can't buy bread and milk and eggs at the grocery store with, built with Bitcoin. But when that happens, Bitcoin will be much closer to um, a proper currency. But we're not there yet. It's not liquid. If it's not liquid, it ain't currency because currency by definition is liquid. M1 is liquid. That's what M1 means. So we'll see. It might have a better chance. How long does it take? Uh, well, I receive uh, Bitcoin from around the world on a regular basis. And um, I received one Bitcoin last week. And it took, I think, six hours. I received it instantly, but I think it took six hours to confirm. Which typically a wire, you couldn't do over a weekend. I don't think mine was over a weekend, but, um, uh, but also it would probably take several days. I'd say probably four days. Of course, Bitcoin, they slip you on the conversion, plus you pay a couple of percent. So it's actually pretty expensive, but it's less expensive than banks and it's faster than banks. So I, I think bit, uh, crypto or let's say blockchain, I think blockchain is definitely the wave of the future. Um, and I would recommend it to my children if they were trying to pick a, like an engineering career. I'd say, well, get get to know blockchain. Right. But as Bitcoin for a real currency, well, it ain't there yet. It's not a unit of account. It's not a store of value and it's not liquid. It's not a medium of exchange. So it doesn't, do, it doesn't address any real measure of what a currency is. Visa International, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> we'll 
Well, the exchange adds 2% right off the bat, Peter. All right. Uh, so let's let's move on to something else. Gold having a hesitation. Okay, so you got to drop in. Are you a buyer? Hmm? Hey, Brandon. Benandemzem. Benandzem. How about Derek? Ben Benandzem. 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 Welcome, Benandzem. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Are you a bull? Not this time. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Blockchain I find very, very interesting. Ooh. Yeah, thank you to everyone for being here today and every day. Betty's going to do it. Emil's selling, <laughs> see? Well, so Emil, let, let's talk about that for a second. So I'm not saying no to selling, but I want you to sell after we get sort of a lower low, and I want you to sell lower highs, okay? So your earliest sell would be tomorrow, and it's not likely to be a good sell. You're basically setting up kind of a double top. So you might be two days away from a, a really good bearish sell. So like, for example, uh, let me change this because this should be set up bullishly. So this is bearish mode. So I'll change it to bullish mode and you'll see that these are all kicking off buy zones. So there's real b uh, bulls here. And so, uh, you know, up, down, up, down. And so there's going to be another one here. And what bulls are thinking is really this, okay? So you got to get out of the way and remind yourself that even if you're a bear on gold, what you want is this. You want a downtrend. And we're, we might be setting that up, but we don't have it yet. So you need a lower high, lower low before you should really be, become a bear and sell the next lower high to get the next lower low. Okay. So remember, selling up here is pretty crazy, actually, and a total gamble. Um, and that's not what I want for you. So at least wait for a lower high. Okay. And that lower high is going to be in this zone, as I already pointed out just a minute or two ago. Currently, it says here. So if you're going to be a bear, sell there, and you're probably going to sell there tomorrow. We're later today and you're front running tomorrow. But again, for you to be front running tomorrow's trade, you got to be pretty aggressively bearish. But at least, please, wait for the lower high. So you might argue as a bear that this created 100% retracement, which is by definition a, a bull killer. And then I want you to then com uh, confirm that by selling the lower high. Okay. So can you wait? Claudio says, Wayne, what about wheat? All commodities in a risk on mode, by, de by definition, demand for everything goes up. And you actually learn this as an economist. Everything. 
Demand for everything goes up. Except Geffen goods. If you're thinking except Geffen goods, then you then you got me. Okay? Demand for everything goes up. Wheat, barley, nickel, gold, palladium, lithium, lumber, beef, chicken, pork, diamonds. Cars, hair dryers, makeup for coats. Okay. Okay. Because all people are spending on everything, and spending is another person's income. So income rises, then they spend more. Hi, <laughs> hi, Lander. Four hundred people, a hundred and fifty likes. Could I please ask you again? Would you please click the like button? I welcome you. I'm here every day. I'll be here tomorrow. I'll be here on Wednesday. I'll be here on Thursday. I'll be here on Friday. So please subscribe. But when you click like, you're simply telling YouTube that this is quality content. So that's all I'm asking for. Would you please... Click the like if you believe this is quality content. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, what would you like me to cover next? What's the next currency? All right, good. Four more people click like. Cool. Gold is always a little different, yes. Well, gold is not really a safe haven commodity, but... Could be, but yeah, but gold is different for sure. So we already did Lyra. Aussie dollar we did already. Pound yen, I don't think we've done beast. Here comes the drums. Boom, 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 boom. Beast, the widow maker. Great British Pound Yen. Uh, why don't I see it? Man, I'm having trouble seeing things these days. And I'm double clicking like crazy. That? Daily? So it's a big day. But if you are a bear, you really got to get ready, huh? You notice if you're a bear, you're going to sell up to about here. So you got 131 coming up hard. This is one chance for bears. One last chance. We, we don't even have a higher high yet on a daily chart. So this is still technically bearish. But this is a, a good bull candle for show. Okay. 
Bears would sell 131. Bears would sell 132. I'm looking into the future here. And that 21 would come down. Okay. So bears are going to sell in there. There's those two bearish shots. So bulls are going to have to pay attention to how this candle closes and how the next one forms. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look on a different point of view here and let's set this up and look for a confluence of support and resistance. And the beast in of itself is way out of its territory. So we'll see. Maybe if we analyze the four hour candles, it'll tell us something different. And it's kind of, right, like this whole area is very susceptible to selling. And the next one isn't really up until there. So, um, if you're a bull, congratulations, nice little move. Um, but be, pay attention, you're, you're in bear zone right now. Okay, and I'll repeat this now on the daily. Okay, you see that zone? That's where bears are going to sell. So be ready for it. So the, I think if you're risk off, okay, you're fully expecting to see this now. Right? Do you agree? If you're a bear, this is the next thing. Junior, that that's called correlation. You're you're suggesting that uh, oil and USD CAD have uh, a strong negative correlation. So how how strong is is it is it point eight three or point eight nine? Uh, I don't know. But you can open your chart and take a look and ask yourself how close they're. Yeah, so if there are bears still here, guys, that's where they're going to sell. That, that's what you need to know. Okay. Bulls would probably try again up here. I mean, bears will, right? If we get a green. So if tomorrow looks like this, I think bears are going to try again on Wednesday. Okay. If Wednesday comes out green, I think bears are, are, are going to take a break. Okay, so watch your watch your dailies. Okay, I don't think bears have much choice here. So how about now if you were a bear scalping a one minute chart or a five minute chart down? Now, typically, you have to ask yourself, is this going to head straight down if it heads down at all? No. So how is it going to behave if it does drop off this area? Right? Except it'd be red. Right? 
So if that's your general idea, or down, down, up, up, down, 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 okay? Either way, you can now scalp on a five minute or a one minute those moves. So the first thing you want to look at if you're scalping is you got to breach this. So right now it's still very bullish. And once you get a breach, you got permission to game on. Okay, game on. You got to wait for the breach though. Otherwise, you're just a gambler. If you're just a gambler, you're like, I'll, I bet you anything that the pound yen is going to fall. You're a gambler, degenerate gambler. You're not using any analysis. God gave you technical analysis and you should use it properly. So once you breach that, then you can start selling lower highs and lower lows. Okay. So right now, our, anal our analysis tells us if there are bears, they're going to be in here somewhere. Okay. And by the way, I can move this up now. Okay. So our analysis on the higher time frame tells us if there are bears, they're going to live in this zone here. So now if you get lower low, you can get a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. You know, not forever, but, you know, 75 pips down or something. So you might get three trades, pick up 100 pips, and you're done. While you wait. Okay. Ooh. By the way, you see what happened to me from mousing too much over the weekend? Ooh, yuck. That's a big owie. That's a lot of mousing. Equity markets are way up. Well, that's why I came out right out of the gate today in today's webinar trying to explain why. Why? Why? Okay, that's what I focused on today. So all thing, all risk assets would be on today. Okay. The J. Powell put. Are you asking me if I own it? No, I am not. Oh, I never thought about that, Batman, but I don't think it's that bad. No, I was swinging a sledgehammer over the weekend. and uh, Henry, there's an 80% discount to the video training courses in the description below the video. So after, yeah, so after swinging the, swing, uh, the sledgehammer a bunch of times, then uh, I had to do hammering and uh, I had big five inch uh, galvanized uh, um, uh, nails. And when you hammer with a sore like that, you gotta be a tough guy. <laughs> Let me just say it hurt. Cool. So here we come. There's our nice little rejection. How do you guys feel about this on a one minute chart? Well, Berlevin, let's just say I went to Home Depot and bought three pairs of work gloves. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> Here we are in the one minute. Let's see if we can breach that. So what it'll do is it'll come down, hit the next level, and then go back up. Okay, we're so the vert the the first breach the first breach and then the second breach are important. Okay, so let me highlight this this way. Uh, what we are thinking here is this. And that didn't draw properly. Highlighter. Oh, that's the highlighter. And then uh, this, and then this, and then this. Okay. And remember, uh, I had this set up like this. Oh, I had this set up 
like uh is this gonna draw an arrow on me it's gonna draw an arrow i don't want an arrow why can't i do this right uh like this this is how i had it set up first oh i see why the other ones didn't Okay, and the right what we're looking for is eh, 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 eh. So thank you again to all the new subscribers today. Make sure you check out and subscribe to my other channel as well. YouTube.com slash FX Bootcamp. Okay, so this is the big test, whether it's going to make a lower low. Okay, so we're really down to the 50-50 here. It's either going to go up and up and up through 131 up to the next level or um, there will be profit taking and then uh, bearish entries and we're on our way back down to let's say 130.50. We're going to find out right here, right now. <laughs> That's funny, Anthony. You know, it felt really good to just get outside and... and do physical work since I, I've been doing so much, you know, school for the last five years. It just feels good to do physical work. I like working hard no matter what. All right. So this is the big question mark. This is the, right. This is why I said, wait, you don't have permission to be a bear yet. But bulls are sweating bullets on what to do here. And so that's why bears are watching too. If bulls are sweating bullets and they decide that they are going to exit, that's the bearish entry. And you'll see that bear, bullish exit by red candles through support, which then will give permission to bears selling at the new resistance. So let's say right here, right now, if we drop below this line, that means bulls are exiting, which means you will be selling in the future as a bear here. And the target's probably going to be about here. We're doing all of this in real time on a one minute chart. If bulls don't exit, then this will continue up to the next target. And then bears will try again and they'll wait. So remember, bears are not even trying yet. We're zoomed in with a bearish point of view, anticipating potential bullish profit taking. If we can confirm bullish profit taking, then bears can then jump in and scalp. So all we're doing is scalping a one minute chart. Okay, so we're waiting for red candles here. Samuel says it's a risk off move, sort of, it would be more profit taking in the beginning. What I showed you, remember this, this pinkish zone above us? That's the zone between today's highest high and yesterday's highest high. It's the last place a bear needs to sell if they exist. But for a bear to sell, we need to remove the bulls. You don't want to sell an uptrend. You'd be a fool, a broke fool. So now you need bulls to exit and then bears to enter. And now you got yourself a profitable move as a bear. So this is all we're watching now on a one minute chart. Okay. And once again, if you don't mind, would you please click the like button if you appreciate watching the potential birth of a downward move on a one minute beast chart. Is this, is, if this is the stuff you want to see, tell me by clicking like.
yeah, the target that is down there. 130.50 is the first one. Yeah, but Anthony, you'll probably see profit taking on that too. But I, as you know, I'm risk on. But this is a dumb place to buy. Is also my point. So I'm not saying this is coming down. I'm not saying I'm risk off. I'm not saying I don't understand the pound yet. I spent an hour talking about why the Dow and the S&P 500 would be up. But that's already old news. Okay. Well, it's hard to say that you guys like this because there's 400 people watching and 200 likes. Oh, oh, those, those, the red and blue things, those are moving averages. Okay. Ingrid, you might consider taking the video training courses. They're 80% off right now. And they'll give you a clear. In fact, let me give you free training. Okay. Let me give you some free training right now. Let me give you some free training that really explains on how to use these moving averages. Hang on. I'm just bringing up the link. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the presentation for the Daily FX. Here you go. Seat, make yourself comfortable. This is a presentation for the Daily FX audience entitled How to Improve the Timing of Your Trade. There you go. So watch those. That'll give you a good explanation right off the bat on how to use those moving averages. It goes over moving averages, oscillators, Fibonacci retracements, and Fibonacci extensions. Uh, Medi, yeah, it should be there. Maybe uh, refresh your page. Okay. Okay, we'll see. We got to get through that 21. Got to get through the 21. Well, if you're going to hit it more than once, hit it at least three times. Okay, let me uh, put these lines back just so you remember. So if we start getting red candles here, it'll confirm a, a short, short, short term double top. Which is not bullish. And then we need the lower low, which is then bearish, which then is lower high, which is the sell. Thank you, Sharif or Sheriff. Thank you, Bailey. OK, 
Okay, if there's no profit taking here, then it'll probably occur in two hours at the end of the New York or at the end of the London trading session. And it just might be a timing issue. Okay. Uh, toxic, yeah. Yeah, we did that one. <laughs> la, 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 la. Yeah, let me, uh, let me pull up. Let's see, let's see what the other markets are doing here. Hang on. So Dow soars 700 points for the biggest jump in a month. Boosted by coronavirus vaccine hope. That's wrong. So anyways, this is all because of the Jay Powell interview last night. Okay. Talk to Ben. I got two more classes this summer before I finish up my uh, master's degree, which is essentially an MBA. Uh my program did the MBA in more than two years. So it was a four year program instead of a two year program. So they don't call it an MBA, but essentially it's an MBA. Um, this has to do with the, uh, the Fed. Uh, VIX is down, which is pretty good. Nine, VIX is coming down 9%, which means people are removing their hedges. Check this out. Uh, the Russell 2000 is up 5% today. Whoa, what? I'm going to take a look around the world. So again, guys, this is just very, very, very short term profit taking that may occur. So this is a terrible place to buy if you're a bull and bears are sitting around waiting to sell because of that. Not because it's a downtrend. This is not a downtrend. So don't be eager to sell. What you're looking for is profit taking and you can take advantage of the profit taking by hunting stops. You get it? You're waiting to hunt stops, but it's too early yet. So we keep watching for uh, profit taking. All right. So what else is going down as far as oil futures um, or in, in regards to futures? Uh, oil is up 11.69 percent. Ho, ho, ho. Gold down a percent, silver up. Platinum way up, copper up, palladium way, way, way up. But gold down. Wheat down. It's at 495. But soybean up, corn is up. Sugar is up 4%. Coffee is up. Oh, by the way, I'm going to donate 30 bags of Starbucks coffee to the local police department. Uh, isn't that cool? So, uh, I already have the coffee. I just got to find time to get over there. Figure, figure cops like coffee, don't they? Cops and coffee? Coca, cacao. Hey, even rough rice is up. Let's see. Live cattle up. Lean hogs up. Mm 
Dow futures up 3.64. S&P 500 futures up 3.0. NASDAQ up 1.89. S&P 500 minis up 5%. So this is dumb money, actually. <laughs> it's going to be short-lived. Okay, so here we go. Here's another attempt, profit-taking. Yeah, I don't like the coffee, but it's a brand that says, look, I'm not just buying you cheap coffee. Um, I'm, I'm trying to give you a brand name. And anyway, so uh, I have this huge box of coffee now. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to give it to the local uh, police department. Toxic Ben says you're really anticipating bears. Not yet. Not until the breach and the pullback. So this is what where you're looking, guys. This is where you want to be the seller. Okay. So we need the down, the up, down, up sort of thing. Okay. So we got to get through here. Let's say, okay. We need, let's do this in black. Okay, you need to get through that. That means bulls are taking profit, which means you need a lower high because you don't sell low as a bear. And now if you sell the lower high guys, as a bear, you're now stop hunting. Do you understand that? Like most people are not going to be selling here. Most people are buyers, not sellers. But if you are selling you're anticipating future bulls taking profit, meaning getting out, because they bought way below. So as it comes down, they're going to get out. But also as it comes down, you're hitting stops if they jam their stop. So you're hunting their stops. Do you get that? These moves down is from stops being triggered either manually or by hitting, right? So they're either clicking a button to say take profit or you're hitting their stops and that's what you're trading so it's not really people selling that you're trading it's people getting out that you're trading okay so what you need is this Okay, so typically you see a change in direction around 1010 if there's no news at 10. If there is 10, a news at 10, and it's not important news, then the change of direction comes at 1013. No, or sorry, uh, no, I got that backwards. If there's no news at 10, the market turns at 955. If there is um, mod if there's moderate to important news, the change of trend happens at 1013 to 1027. Okay. So anyways. So once again, I hope you guys appreciate trading this on a one minute chart. The most volatile currency pair that we have. That's not what we're trading. Claudio says, still, this is not Brexit. This isn't fundamental. This isn't a bias. This is chasing stop losses. This is hunting stop losses.
Uh, Rust, maybe mine's not a scam. I don't know. Yeah, right, Toxic? Ben's right. It's just a scalp. Thank you, Hope. Remember, it's still bullish on the medium to long run. This is only short term profit taking. Nothing else has changed. Okay. Scalping is just a cheap trick. Still hasn't breached. Okay, this is the real pullback. So see how we hit this pink zone? That's the real dip we had to get through. Okay. I'm going to adjust this one as the lower high. This is a big moment of truth here. Well, it has to do with the one minute versus the five minute charts, guys. Okay, this is the moment of truth now. This might be your lower high. Okay, this might be your lower high. Down. Up. So if this rolls over, that's going to be that's going to be your number. OK, so wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. OK, we really have to get through this. I mean, if you just go to a five minute chart, I mean, that's clearly what we need to play. OK, so really the big move on the five minute chart is now this. Okay. 
And remember, this whole thing is a daily chart. That, that's it. You see where we are? So you're getting caught up minute by minute by minute by minute by minute. Uh, this is, right? That's all the move. Right, you're 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 trading every single minute, holding your breath on every single one minute candle, and yet every single one one minute candle is irrelevant on the longer term. Okay. Well, I might do stuff like that if I can get 10,000 subscribers on FX Bootcamp. And right now there's 9,500. So I need another 500 subscribers on the other channel. So... Check out the free training course there. Maybe subscribe, huh? Okay. Remember, this is the doozy. This is the one we care the most about. This is the primary uh, support, which we have to breach support. Remember that. We have to breach support. It's not bearish until you breach support so right now we're only playing off a sort of a, a moderate little resistance um, I'm much more interested in break breaching support than playing resistance okay how's that right Javier yeah, so what I want to do is uh, we should plan them out on Zoom so everyone with a cigar and we can talk about the news together. I want to talk more than preach. Okay. Wait for it. Uh, well, no, because I mean, essentially it ends up being the same sure trade. It ends up being the same. If you wait for that, then you're probably going to get this next move. And it's all the same. It just risk tolerance is different, right? But notice like if you drag this across what I'm doing, okay? So we haven't become bearish yet. You have to understand that. You haven't become bearish yet. You haven't become bearish yet. Okay? We've, we haven't had enough bullish profit taking for bears to st hunt stops. If we breach this, then you, there, there is enough bullish profit taking for you to start hunting stops. You might have to wait till the London close for this to work. We might be 45 minutes early. Or we're not. We don't know when bulls are going to exit. We know, we know what price they're going to exit. So I clearly articulated, look, they're going to get out here. That's it. That's easy. That's the easiest thing ever. So now we're here. Now we're waiting for the time. We know the price. We just don't know the time. Is that right, Hope? Yeah, I thought we'd do like either coffee and cigars or whiskey and cigars or wine and cigars. Okay, this is a test. So now this is definitely bulls taking profit. It may be the first bears hunting stops. We, but it's still not technically bearish until we breach support. Yes, resistance held. Yes, that might be the first bears, but
but we need to be confident in breaching the support to make it technically, aka technical analysis, bearish. Okay, then you got to wait for the new up, and then you're going to get the new down. And of course, all of this is not truly a bearish market. It's still bears hunting stops of bulls. And what will bulls do later today and tomorrow? Bulls are going to buy a dip. They need bears to bring this down. Okay, so let's do this. What would a bull do here? Well, the standard operating procedure for a bull is they're going to fib this sucker and their new buy zone is going to be down here between these numbers. Okay, so then you look at this 3050, which is my target, by the way, down to 130. So now we know a 50 pip buy zone for bulls later today, aka tomorrow. So for bulls to get that, they need to exit their trades. Let's do this in black. Bulls need to exit their trades, have bears squeeze all the ones that are out that are too lazy to make the proper decisions. And then we get down here and then bulls are going to buy it there tomorrow. The same bulls that bought it here, remember, they're smart. So because they're so smart, they're going to buy that there tomorrow. Okay. If this truly is a total change in direction, you're probably going to get this going. Okay. So if you go to the day chart, let me explain for like the 19th time. If you were Barry here on the daily chart, this was your like, you had to sell here. You had to. The next one is another 100 pips up. Yes, now, Lou, I can do it on every time frame. Whether you can, I'm not sure. <laughs> Remember, this is nothing. This is nothing. Scalping is just a cheap trick. There's no real value in it. Okay, so let me explain that. If you're a bear and you sell here, you're going to sell, uh, stay short for as long as you possibly can. You're probably not interested in the 50 pip drop. You're interested in the 300 pip drop, 400 pip. Okay. So uh, made as a bear and she made 700 pips on her bearish trade. Who cares about the stupid 50 pips? It's a joke. 25 pips? Embarrassing. Right? So a proper trade is taking this down properly. Okay? And that would be a bear truly taking this down is going to go for a bearish target. And um, the weekly target is buck 28. So, you know, a bear is going to be embarrassed if they don't pick up 300 pips this week. Okay. That's why I'm like, this move here is just, it fills a webinar and it's all kind of stuff. But like, who cares if it drops 30 pips? It just, it's 10% of the potential move. So all this is, is some stop hunting at the end of a market. It's barely interesting. Right? Stoned already got 40 pips. Cool. Wait, what do you mean 40 pips? It only went to 131, dude. And we're at 130.90. What are you talking about? It's not mathematically possible for you to have 40 pips. Still no breach. Still no breach. Yeah, it must be a different chart. There's there isn't we're not even close to 40 pips.
No, we breached it, Sean. We already blew through it, so it's dead to me. La di da di da di da. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's see if the candle holds, which is funny because it's a one minute candle. So what you'll start to see is stops. If it if it goes red and then all of a sudden it doubles in size, it's not that more bears sold, it's that they hit bullish stop losses. That's why I call this stop hunting. Okay? You see it moving? That's not people selling, that's stop hunting, uh, hitting stops. So I call that cascading. What do you think? Are you guys liking this? I don't think so because hardly anyone's liked. Yeah, we talk in pips, not points, stoned. So when I say, you know, Meta made 700 pips, I mean 700 large. Right? We're, we're swing traders in the swing trading group. We don't, we don't piss around with little trades like 25 or 30 or 40 pips, 50 pips. We have a saying, right? We're embarrassed if we make less than 100. Okay. Why is that arrogance? No, it's because we have solid trade plans based on hardcore technical analysis that confirms or denies our fundamental bias. Because it's worth more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're good, man. By the way, our performance coaching does this every single day. Candle, 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 next candle, next candle, next candle. And we got some surprise announcements coming in regards to performance coaching. But you need to know how to trade candle by candle. There's no doubt about that. So I think my work is done here. I think I made my point. I think I need another cup of coffee. I think I need to, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, got stuff to do. I got to launch MetaTraders 2.0. There's lots of things to work on and all these things are good for you. Uh, but I'd like to just sit and have a cup of coffee as well. Cool, right? So 384 people. So there was probably a total of 1,000 people that attended today. And out of 1,244 people liked it. It's kind of a shame, actually. I'm not sure why that happens. But anyways, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for all the, the positive energy that you feed me every day. Thank you for the effort that you put into trading every day. Thank you for your comments and your questions. Thank you for taking notes. Thank you for your professionalism. Thank you for being a subscriber of Forex.today. Thank you for being a client of TradersWay.com, our sponsor. If you're new to these webinars, please visit TradersWay.com. Open up a demo account. It takes literally a minute, less than a minute. Fill out the form, get your back office, download MT4, and uh, practice. 
practice for a day, practice for a week, practice for a month, a quarter, a year, three years, five years, whatever it takes. But when you feel confident enough to trade real money, hopefully they have earned your loyalty and respect too. That's all they're asking you for, an opportunity to earn your loyalty and respect so that when you choose a broker and tra for trading real money, they'll have an opportunity to do that for you. Okay, so give them, a, give them an opportunity, tradersway.com. And there's the trade still moving. So uh, I will see you tomorrow. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. May you be safe. May your friends and family be safe and healthy. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. If you need a link to my book, to the 80% discount to my training courses, to the performance coaching, to Trader's Way, to... Um, uh, my chart templates, all those resources are available to you just below the video. Please take advantage of whatever you need, because over the years, people have asked me to do all these things, and therefore, I've created all these re um, resources. Um, and remember, we're talking over a period of 20 years. These things were developed for traders because traders asked for them, and I delivered. So enjoy.